Good morning, Benevola. Good morning. My name is Becky Hine. I am the lay reader, lay leader here, and I am here today because Pastor Suzanne is at Salem. They are celebrating their 250th anniversary this weekend, and so she wanted to really devote more time there. So she asked me if I would fill in here, which I'm glad to do. I know we're going to do some announcements this morning. There are lots of there are lots of announcements in your bulletin. Um, I'll point out the SPPRC meeting and choir practice this week. And Nicole has something. I too am a stand-in for Pastor Suzanne. She grabbed me this week and asked if I would draw your attention to the insert, the colorful insert in your bulletin. There's also a stack of them out in the vestibule area, and I believe there's some by the side door as well as you go out. Pastor Suzanne would like me to convey to you that she does not want to see a single one of these in this church this week. They are to go out into the community. They're go to friends, neighbors, um, leave them at your doctor's office, anywhere. Um, they're just telling about upcoming events, things that people have put uh, a lot of effort into, and some fun things that we have coming up for the family with the movie night and trunk or treat um, and our chili and soup cook off. Always a good time there. And also something new a drive through living nativity. Mm. So lots of exciting stuff <laughs> happening, and um, we're going to need volunteers and helpers for that, but that's just a teaser, so spread the word. Thank you. Are there any other announcements that we should make this morning? Then let us do what we came to do. Would you? I did not get a PowerPoint put together today, so that's why you don't see any. But we have our bulletins, and we're going to use our bulletins this morning. So if you'll stand with me, we'll do our call to worship. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked. Whose advice will you follow? The Lord, guide us with your advice. Happy are those who do not follow the path that sinners tread. Whose path will you follow? Show us your path, O Lord. Happy are those who delight in the Lord. On the law they meditate day and night. Open the word of God for us this day, we pray. Our first hymn is Blessed Assurance, number 369.
seated. This is the time in our worship service where we can share our joys and our concerns. What joys or concerns do you have today? Yes, Sally. <laughs> Sally's daughter Deborah has had lots and lots of challenges and they're thankful for the, the prayers for her. She's facing shoulder replacement, wants very much to get back on that tennis court. So Yes. Uh Logan heard is a new Friday night in the football game at Brunswick, so just be with him. We'll take him to the doctors on Monday just for for his mental health. Okay, so Logan's going to the doctor to check out that knee that got hurt. Melinda. Yes, your hand's just here. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yes, Melinda. We will pray for you, your doctors and your eyes that they may heal quickly from the cataract surgery. Yes. We can pray for that. Dave is getting rid of kidney stones, and we hope that that gets rid of all of them. Yes. We want that freedom to really be free. Yes, we do. Prayers for uh, Gary Mitchell. He needs arm surgery. Go see the doctor for now. Prayers for Gary Mitchell and his family as he's in the final stages. Yeah. Deanna Mullendor is moving to Homewood. Yes, I know. Porter is still enjoying popsicles after his tonsillectomy. <laughs> Let us go to God in prayer. Our Father, we're enjoying this fall weather, this beautiful weather that you've given us outside. Um, we thank you for the leaves that are starting to turn and the beautiful colors that we see there for the, the mums that are coming into blossom. We thank you for the beauty of the earth because there is beauty all around us. Help us to open our eyes and see that beauty. We thank you for the opportunity to come together as a body of Christ and to share our, our concerns. This morning we've listed, lifted several people, surgeries upcoming, surgeries past. We thank you for the doctors and for their wisdom. We pray continue to be with them. Pray for those that are about to change positions in life and take on new new residences, whether it be to Homewood or to, to be with you. Watch over and bless them and help them to feel your presence. Help us to feel your presence in all that we say and do. We thank you especially for your son and the example that he set for us. We thank you for the words that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I would invite you to pass the peace. Greet, greet your neighbor and welcome them. Say hello. I would invite the children to come up and join me. Welcome to everybody online. Do you see there? What do you think my theme is? You see a blanket. You know who made this blanket? Miss Dottie. Miss Dottie finished this blanket last week. Oh, did you make? Did you do it? No. What? Tomorrow's her birthday, and she finished a blanket last week. Happy birthday to Dottie! So, one of the ministries that we have here at church is a quilting ministry. And a bunch of us ladies get together every Tuesday morning, and we're always happy for more people to do that. So that's a ministry. Do you know what this one's about? Crop walk. The crop walk, yep. There are envelopes like this out there. Do you know how the crop walk works? You get an envelope, and you go to lots of people, and you say, I'm walking on the crop walk. And that money goes to Church World Service. So Church World Service helps a lot of people. And it's one of the places that we support. And when you get money, then you put it in the envelope, and you can walk on the walk. It's at Taylor Park in Keatingsville on October 13th. We're going to walk all the way around in through, through Keatingsville that day. I've been at Keatingsville. Have you? So talk to your parents about whether you can walk in the crop walk, okay? That would be something that you could do. You know what this is? It's a shoebox. What do we do with shoeboxes? Thank you very much. Now you can hear me. Shoeboxes, what do we do? We put shoes in them. We usually do. You're right. At Christmas time, we fill them up with toys and goodies for children that don't get Christmas. And so we fill up those shoeboxes, and I put some out in the hallway. And you can take a shoebox home and fill it up for a child that doesn't have Christmas. That would be fun, wouldn't it? Yeah. So that would be something that you guys could do. Um, what else do I have here? I've got some canned goods. Why do you think I have those? What would they be for? Katie's Cupboard. Katie's Cupboard, yeah. And your family can help to bring in some canned goods for Katie's Cupboard. There's a basket in the in the office and there's a shopping cart out in the the hallway in the next to the bathroom out there in the coat closet you can put any canned goods or mashed potatoes or macaroni and cheese or cereal you can bring those kinds of things to church and share them who do you think gets the food at Katie's cupboard you get the food from Katie's cupboard nope People who don't have much food, you're exactly right. And 
once a month we have people that come and they help they get food from us and then another time they get food from CAC so two times a week two times a month we have people that come that need food and that's a way that we can reach out and share Christ with other people let's see I've got I've got a what do you think this one's for this little circle Apple dumplings. Yeah, we made a whole bunch of apple dumplings, didn't we? We're going to make them one more time, and that's going to help support the women's retreat because the women that go on that retreat, they get all fired up for Christ again when they go on that retreat. It helps to revive us, and then we can share Christ with all kinds of people. You guys are going to be in school the day we do those. That's October 16th. Let's see. This one's for Vacation Bible School. Did you guys enjoy Vacation Bible School? Yeah. yeah. That was fun, wasn't it? And then we invite all kinds of other people to come in from all around the, the community, and we tell them about Christ. So today we're talking about a lot of different missions and a lot of different thing, ways that we can volunteer. I've got a paper I'm going to give to you. You see the little dots next to some things there? I put little dots on the ones for, that I thought you guys could maybe help with. Okay? I'm, I have a whole bunch of these out in the hallway. If you want to take a couple, well, you guys are mostly going to Children's Church right after this. So I'm going to put these out in the hallway. But you can tell your parents about the different activities that are on there. Those are some that we're going to talk about. I've got one shirt way over here. And that's about a mission trip that Mr. Klaus and myself are going on on Saturday. And I've asked Mr. Gale if he would come and say a little prayer for us. Because it's always good to have kind of a blessing before we go. Just a few words. So um, as our council chair... Uh, our Ad Council meets uh, about every two months, and a lot of the things that are discussed are uh, how we spend our money. And Benevola has always been a church that has tried to go beyond our walls. One of the things we have on a, as a line item on our uh, budget is a thing called Volunteers in Mission. And Volunteers in Mission is a group that essentially uh, anyone that has, uh, say, a need, Oftentimes, disaster relief will send uh, uh, folks that will volunteer to go on these missions, and they may help uh, some place that uh, has suffered from a hurricane or a, or a flood or something like that. And a lot of these houses uh, are uh, people are poor, and they don't have funds to fix them up. So, uh, just so you know, I mean, a lot of the ad council work goes on behind the scenes, I know, but I want to be transparent. This week we had an ad council meeting, and one of the things we talked about was these VIMs, Volunteers in Mission, they don't just happen, just happenstance. Uh, there needs to be some money that goes to purchase the supplies here. Uh, typically the folks that go, they pay their own way to go to the, the on the trip or for transportation and things of that nature. Uh, there have been times where we've funded some of those people. But uh, this particular week, uh, we appropriated another $5,000 to this volunteer and mission group uh, for materials uh, in Hinman, Kentucky, which is an area that suffered from a flood. Yeah, from a flood. So um, Becky and Klaus are going down. Uh, it's, I think, a two-week uh, mission trip this particular time. And uh, so we want to uh, ask for prayers for um, Becky and Klaus. Uh, bow your heads, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for volunteers in mission, uh, hands and feet on the ground that serve you and, and reach into communities. We thank you for Becky and Klaus and their willingness to go. We pray for uh, safe trips, uh, safety at the work sites, uh, witness to the folks that are receiving uh, the help here 
And we pray that hearts will be changed. We thank you so much for the blessings that you give us that we are able to do these things. But we know that it all comes from you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. On a, a detail about what we're doing down there in those two weeks. So it's in Hindman, Kentucky. Um, it's about eight hours drive. We're building two homes. They're habitat homes. One is a four-bedroom, uh, 48-foot frontage long. The other one is a two-bedroom, 36 feet. And the intent is that we'll be building it from the foundation walls up to be fully enclosed. So that would mean all the walls, the roof, windows and doors put in so it'll be weather tight. And they're, the two homes are about five minutes apart from each other and we heard that the people who were displaced, who are waiting for, the families who are waiting for these homes live right adjacent to the site. So we'll have a good bit of interaction with those folks and hear hear their story on you know, how they lost everything. That, uh, that town is in a valley and they had a lot of rain and the floods just basically swept much of the town and the houses away in 2022. If you're interested, look on YouTube and just put in Hindman, Kentucky and you can get a picture of that. So I'm going to let you all go ahead and go to Children's Church. The Hang on one second, please. The trip that we're going on, I, it's for two weeks. We have some people that are going for the first week. We have some people that are going for the second week. We have some people that are going for both weeks. It is not closed. If God's been poking you and saying, you've seen it in the bulletin for a couple weeks, if God's been poking you and say, maybe you should go along, it's not too late. Talk to myself or Klaus after the service. Um, if money is the, is the drawback, there is that money in the budget. There is money at the church to help pay your way if that's what's keeping you from going. So just putting it out there that it's still open and you're still welcome to come for as much or as little of that trip as you would like. Now we'll let Bruce read the scriptures for today. Oh, I goofed on the scripture, so he's going to be reading verse 10 instead of verse 1 in Proverbs. Makes a lot more sense that way. The first uh, scripture reading is from Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10 and 15 through 20. A wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. She gets up while it is still dark. She provides food for her family and portions for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sits about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her training is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. Gospel reading is from Mark chapter 9, verses 30 through 37. They left that place and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know where they were because he was teaching his disciples. He said to them, The Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of men. They will kill him, and after three days he will rise. But they did not understand what he meant and were afraid to ask him about it. They came to Capernaum where he was in the house. When he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and said, If anyone wants to be first, he must be the very last and the servant of all. He took a little child and had him stand among them. Taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me does not welcome me but the one who sent me. The word of God for the people of God. Be to God. 
So one other mistake that I made is that it should not be in place, let me see, it should not be in place of women who lead, but in praise of women who lead. It makes a difference too. I tried, Pastor Suzanne asked me if I would preach today, um, right at the beginning of church last week. And so I knew that I had a busy week and I put the bulletin together real quick. So I apologize. I make mistakes. And it was last night, I think, as I was going to bed that I realized I didn't do a PowerPoint and I thought, it is what it is. So (laughs) thank you. Let's pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord. Amen. So as I read this scripture in Mark, I thought, what on earth happened before they did this? So I went back to the beginning of Mark, and I found out that at the very beginning of Mark, which is chapter 9, so even more has happened before this, but at the beginning of chapter 9, Jesus goes up on the mountain with Peter, James, and John, and that's where the transfiguration happens, where Jesus gets all white and glowy, and Elijah and Moses come down, and the three of them talk. And as they're talking, Peter says, wouldn't it be wonderful if we all built little little houses and you could just stay here, up here on the mountain, not understanding at all what's going on. And on the way back down, Jesus says, now don't tell anybody, don't tell anybody about this until after the Son of Man is risen. And I'm sure the questions were going through their heads. What on earth are you talking about? The Son of Man risen? And why can't we build these shelters? And what on earth is going on? And so they come down off of the mountain and they find chaos when they get down. Everybody's all in an uproar. People are all upset. And Jesus says, what on earth is going on? Um, And the disciples, they, they find out that there was a man that brought his son to the disciples and asked, could they please heal his son? His son was possessed by demons and he kept on foaming at the mouth and just uncontrollable. And the disciples were not able to heal him. And so the man was upset, and the disciples were upset, and Jesus is upset as well. He says, you unbelieving generation, how long must I stay with you? Bring the boy to me. So when the boy was brought to him, the boy, the demon in the boy recognized Jesus. The boy ended up on the ground, his mouth foaming again, and The dad said, if you can do anything, please take pity on him and help us. Jesus said, if you can, everything is possible for one who believes. So he's ridiculing the the disciples. If you believe, it can happen. The dad says, I do believe. Help my unbelief. How often do we have unbelief? And God is willing to help our unbelief as well. Of course, Jesus healed the boy, and the disciples said, Why couldn't we do that? Jesus said, This kind of demon can only come out by prayer. So a lot has happened before we get to the portion that we read today. And in the portion that we read today, um, the Jesus says to the disciples, he's teaching the disciples, and he says, the Son of Man will suffer and die and rise. The confused disciples looked at each other. The Son of Man will die, will suffer, and will rise. I'm sure that the questions were going through their heads. What on earth are you talking about? But they, they didn't ask the questions. What kind of questions do we ask? do we have running through our heads that we just, you know, God, why? Why do people suffer? Why are humans so brutal and mean to each other? Why does evil succeed? Is anyone safe if they're going to kill Jesus? 
God, why did you create a world like this? We've got lots of questions. And it's okay to ask those questions. We may not get answers, but it's okay to ask those questions. If we don't ask those questions, we do just what the disciples did. They started arguing with, with each other. We take out that, ben, that stored up stuff inside of us is going to come out somehow. And if it's not through those questions, then it's going to be some other way. And for the disciples, they were arguing with each other. And so Jesus said, he calls them out on it. He says, what were you arguing about? Um, what gets in the way of us seeing what is important in our life? And how can we fix our eyes on Jesus? That's how things are made right. Jesus answers them and says, anyone who wants to be first, well, they say, well, we were arguing about who's going to be the greatest. And Jesus turns it upside down and says, anyone who wants to be great will be least, will be the servant of all. So if we want to be great, the only way to be great is to be servant of all. I feel like every time I preach, I end up preaching on the same thing. How can we be a servant to all? But that's my life. <laughs> I live, I get the privilege of being a full-time volunteer, of being able to be a servant to many. And that's what I brought this morning. I was able to find things here at church and in my car and in my house that represent ways that we can serve. And I do have, I wrote up the little half sheet of paper. Um, I've got, I don't have anything up here for the nativity, but the nativity is something where we will need volunteers. Um, we're gonna have a drive-through, it'll go up through the park. We've had one meeting. Um, we're gonna be making costumes and have five different stations where people can see the different aspects of the nativity. The crop walk is coming up. You've seen information in the bulletin about that and the shoe boxes over and over. You've seen about the, the mission trip that Klaus and I are taking. Um, we have a, a dinner coming up. I've got the big pan over there representing the Hope Dinner that's going to be October 21st. Um, you can make some cookies for that. We take the Hope Center is a place where men and women come for supper and then the men stay overnight that are homeless. As we sleep in heavenly peace is on my list as well. Uh, that's what the board is for, the slats that we put on the beds. Um, as I was driving around putting bed, delivering beds on Friday, I was aware of how many homeless people we have in Hagerstown and those those are the least. Those are the ones that we kind of look down on. Those are the ones that Jesus, as he tells the disciples and he takes the, the child in his arms, those are the people that, again, Christ turns everything upside down because the children at that time were not revered as much more than a property. How do we revere the homeless? Are we willing to take them in and minister to them? Just thoughts, questions going through my head. How can we do that? Um, we can always use backup Sunday school teachers or people that are willing to teach a, a Bible study. I've got on this list who you can talk to about these different things. The children's ministry, I talked to Nicole this morning. They do have Sunday school teachers for each class but it would be nice to have backup Sunday school teachers. Um, we provide meals for shut-ins. You've seen that in the bulletins as well. Kathy Whitman takes care of that. I'm sure Ruann would love to have more people join in various parts of the choir, whether you join the choir or whether you just offer to sing one Sunday. Um, I'm sure John would be glad for more folks to volunteer and help with things around the church that need to be done. I found um, the, the soap doesn't work in the bathroom. 
you know, it's just, it's little things. But if you find little things that need to be fixed, go ahead and fix them or let somebody know that they need to be fixed here at church. I have... I have had on my shoulders the Literacy Council for the last couple weeks. The Literacy Council could really use more tutors. We have tutor training coming up, and I was in the park yesterday and found some folks that might be willing to be tutors. Um, I'd be glad to talk with you about that. It's volunteering to teach somebody how to read, do math, borrowing with subtraction. You can do that. Math, the math that they need is not algebra right now. They need to get to algebra, and you could learn it again with them, um, or, or learning English. More and more folks are coming here that need to learn English. And I met a, a wonderful young man yesterday who came from France, came via France from Congo, but he is working at, at a, um, a car place, Enterprise, in Hagerstown, and he wants to become a manager. He had fairly good English, but he needs that improved in order to move on up into the manager position. Because when people call, they say, I don't understand you. Give me the, give the phone to somebody else that I can understand. So he's working at his English, but he needs help getting it better. Um, of course, I can always use more help with delivering beds. I've got Habitat down here on the end. We've got a dinner auction coming up. We'd be glad for people to come and go to the dinner auction. It is kind of expensive. It's $75 a person, but that's the big fundraiser for Habitat. Um, I talked to Kathy this morning, and she's willing to put together a basket to be auctioned off. Maybe you have something else that could be used as a silent auction item. If you do, please talk to me. We need those. And there's a shopping bag because I help my mom get her groceries. Maybe, they, maybe you have a friend that could use some help getting groceries. In our scripture this morning, we had Proverbs chapter 31. And there it talks about the wise woman and all the wonderful things that she can do, that she does to be able to um, help her family, help those around her. So... I encourage you to look up Proverbs 31 and read that again. That's good examples for all of us of ways that we can help others. Just as a side note, our hymns today were written by women in praise of women. Our first one was written by Fanny Crosby, and Phoebe actually wrote the music for that. So Blessed Assurance was written by Fanny Crosby, and the music was by Phoebe nap and the second hymn that we're doing today is be thou my vision and that was those words were, were written by mary brine in 1905 and then versed by eleanor hall so there are women that were praising women today and that's those hymns were written by women in second peter one of the one of the talk shows I heard this week mentioned 2 Peter 3, verse 8. One day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. It was Johnny Erickson Tata was in touch with somebody that had Lou Gehrig's disease. And she didn't have much time to live. And Johnny said, but you have today. And today is as a thousand years for God. So make today count. Give somebody a smile. Thank your mom for putting the food in your feeding tube. Who can we make smile today? What things can we do today? We've got all day long to be able to reach out and make somebody else smile. Spread the love of God. Do not be just a servant, but be a servant to all. Be a servant to all. Be a servant to those homeless folks that I saw walking the streets. How do we do that? It's because we have Jesus with us. And we have each other to support each other. Jesus had each other. And we have one another. So who is teaching you how to do that? 
we have the scriptures and the Holy Spirit. We are called to be last. We are called to be a servant. Being great starts when we set our hearts toward the ways of God and then loving the world more like God loves us. True greatness is measured by how, how far down someone will reach to serve in Jesus' name. Jesus shows us what it's like to serve by taking a child in his arms. When are we willing to be the last and to serve? That's when we are doing God's will. Let us pray. God, help me loosen my grip on the things of life that matter less. Give me eyes to see, eyes to see the kind of love that you see in others. Give me a heart to serve. Amen. We are called to share in what we have. And at this time, we're going to offer our, invite our ushers to come forward and take up our offering. Um, thank you, Liam. Dear God, we thank you today for the teachings and blessings you have given us. May these offerings be used to praise you and bless others with your goodness. Amen. Our closing hymn is Be Thou My Vision, number 451.
as we go out today, may we follow Jesus' vision. He has a vision for you. Open your heart to his vision. Amen. Thank you.